Hello, my name is Wade Nimmer, and this is Rotary Serving Our Community. With us today, we have some of the best club presidents in the district. Each year, uh, we select the governor and his staff will select the best clubs in each of three categories. And we are fortunate to have all three of them here today. With me, I have Sherry, Terry, and Doug. So welcome, everybody. Thank you, Wade. Thanks, Wade. <laughs> I'm going to start with you there, Sherry. Tell us a little bit about yourself. I'm Sherry Sim. I'm the immediate past president from the Rotary Club of Cayucas, uh -huh. and I'm currently serving as Group 11 Assistant Governor for Rotary uh, District 5240. I have been in Cayucas for about 15 years okay. and am a real estate broker. Real estate broker, okay. And what got you into Rotary? Good question. <laughs> I got dragged into Rotary. Okay. <laughs> However, in 2005, I saw a very compelling video showing Rotarians uh, at the borders of India, Pakistan, and Afghanistan, and Taliban stopped the war to allow Rotarians yeah. to go in right. to deliver polio drops. Mm. A light bulb clicked at me, and I said, I'm committed. Yeah. I'm going to stay in Rotary. Good for you. Good for you. And how about you there, Terry? <clears throat> I'm Terry Morler. I'm from Westlake Village, and our club is Westlake Village Sunrise Rotary Club. Mm -hmm. And next year, I'm proud to say that I'll be 30 years in Rotary. Oh, my gosh. Good for and, you. And um, also, uh, next year, I will be 40 years uh, as a realtor uh, in Westlake Village, uh, Caneo Valley. And I got into Rotary because I had a passion um, for the food bank, for the Manor mm -hmm. Food Bank. And okay. so somebody had told me that if I wanted to expand my vision of my passion for Rotary, for the Manor Food Bank, I could bring it to Rotary. So I brought my, my vision of what I wanted to do with uh, the Manor Food Bank. And so uh, our club has been very involved in the food bank ever since. Great. Well, thank you. And Doug? Uh, let's see, I'm from uh, the Rotary Club of Ventura. And I've been a member for about 14 years. And a current past president as of two days ago go. And uh, let's see, I'm a landscaper, but I'm a chemical engineer by major, <laughs> a landscaper by passion. <laughs> and so I've had a company, a landscape company for about 28 years now, been in Ventura for 34 years. And I got involved with Rotary, uh, mainly because a lot of my friends were Rotarians, yeah. and they got to know me through community activity. And I knew that um, with a lot of the challenges I've had in my life, I really come to realize what life was all about. And life's all about relationships and making sure that you're giving back to your community. And so I was a Rotarian before I knew I was a Rotarian, <laughs> is the thing. And my friends knew that about me. And it's probably been the best thing I've ever joined. Yeah. Very good, thank you. Thanks. So I'm gonna guess all three of you, neither, none of you, had any idea you're going to be sitting up here as best club president? No. <laughs> Total surprise. 72 really? clubs in the district. I mean, you never know. But um, I want to start with you there, Doug. Okay. Tell us a little bit about what you made you become a best club president. What, um, what out there was something that you drove you to you know, attain this? I, it's, um, that's a good question, Wade. I think uh, for me, I, I tend to try to stay focused on the goals. And what I see is Rotary is a fantastic vehicle for uh, combining resources and relationships and helping to make what may seemingly be like an unsurmountable problem fixed or a solution created. And so I try to stay focused on that goal and I believe uh, Rotary will continue to morph to meet today's needs because I think years ago when uh, we just reached our 100 year right. goal too, you know, a yeah. 100 year anniversary on May May 4th and did a fantastic gala. But I think because um, we, we engaged more members, we reversed the trend of losing members and significantly increased our membership during this year. Uh, I can honestly say we spent a considerable amount of emphasis on uh, the programs that we have during our lunchtime hour and making sure that those programs were relevant and that we left more informed about something about our community, the world, or a need that we might be able to help fulfill. That's great. Mm -hmm. So, Very good. How about you, Terry? Yeah. Well, very much like Doug, um, you know, our club, like many clubs, not only Rotary, but other service-type clubs are getting older and members are, you know, um, dying off, unfortunately, and it's very hard to attract younger people, to, you know, to come in, and especially in our club because we're a 7 a.m. club, and so it's sometimes more challenging for that. But I took um, 
the liberty to go to two uh, rotary, uh, rotary conventions, which really changed my life. Mm -hmm. And um, I really centered on uh, membership and how to bring younger people into our club. And I knew that when I became president, I wanted to do, I wanted to, to really change things. And so we started with a retreat and uh, we had one year, three year goals. And um, they were very different than anything we had ever had before because our two major fundraisers that we had had for many years went by the wayside because two of the people who led those passed away. And so we had to change things. And, from going to the convention, what I learned was there was really more about engagement than it was the attendance that we used to have. Right. And so like Doug, we had to really reinvent our uh, meetings. We had to reinvent the um, speakers that we had. We had to make things a lot more engaging. And uh, we also changed the uh, membership um, uh, a little bit differently. We have um, a corporate membership that allowed um, a president of a company or somebody who led a company and then to have two of their people maybe come so that they, we would have different people but they could become engaged and they would be more in tuned into wanting to come. Then we started a spousal membership because most of our spouses are really involved and so we made a spousal membership and then um, we made a young professional membership and so we were able to increase our membership by 15 new members based on that. And then we started another group that's called Friends of Rotary. And those were people who were within our community that many of our friends that weren't ready yet to step up. And so we had 20, 25 of those people who helped us during the course of the year, Great. which really changed the, our club quite a bit. Outstanding. So. And you, Sherry, how about you? Well, I see Rotarians as... Um, uh, ambassadors of goodwill for the little t beach town of Cayucas of about 3,000 people Cayucas Rotary Club has become the club that the community look forward to we've become the people of action club so my focus is on our members we feel that members participation is so much more important member especially to engage them and accuse them and inspire them to do projects that are of interest to them mm -hmm. and yet meet the needs of the community and and the towns in Estero Bay and also we support Rotary International uh, efforts to eradicate polio. Very good. Um, by the way we have um, on the desk here two of the three bells. Uh, this is the best small club that was given to you. It's a per perpetual trophy actually built by um, Let's see, Felix Massey, I yes. believe, yes. from Thousand Oaks yes. did these yeah. uh, back in, I think it was 2000. So we have two of the three here. This is the best small club. This is yours, there, Sherry. So it's Thank supposed you. to start each of the meetings with the bell there. We have the best medium. That's yours there, Terry Wright. And My Doug, name. yeah, I heard they don't trust you with the That's bell. Right. So, <laughs> yeah, we got a little problem there. <laughs> That's what happens when you're the past president, I guess. <laughs> We're going to start with you there, Doug. You have some pictures that you brought with yep. us and some of the events that you've had. So go ahead and go over those with us, and we'll show the audience those photos. Okay, that sounds great. Uh, we brought a handful of pictures, and the first one is uh, we do several projects. I think we have about 14 projects uh, mm -hmm. that we do uh, annually, and we inv invent new ones every year. But the first one is what we call the Backpack Project, and it's for Ventura Unified School District. And we end up for a lot of students can't afford the materials that they need and the schools just don't provide them. So uh, we raise money and then uh, purchase a lot of the, uh, the supplies that a student would need. And for those students who um, can't afford to get their backpack and the materials, then we give them to them. So we do about 3,000 backpacks. Wow, that's And great. then we have, uh, the next slide is a uh, picture is of our career, career days, where we go and talk to the students about our careers, what we do. And for me, it's very important because uh, we don't teach people to go into the trades. And so the trades are really hurting and explaining to young people that the trades are not only a very creative place to be, uh, but it's, it, re it really can create a great livelihood as well. And then the third uh, photo is of our holiday shopping spree. Mm -hmm. And I gotta tell you, uh, that's uh, our Christmas uh, shopping. And the school district chooses 150 students that may not necessarily have a, a holiday or a Christmas without some help. So we invite them to meet us at Kohl's mm -hmm. and uh, in the morning they close the store for us and we get to shop and they give us certain discounts. 
but we all take a hand, a two or three students and help them shop. They come with their list. It's not about toys, it's about things that they need, but it's really, as somebody who doesn't have kids myself, um, it's probably my favorite part about the holidays because nice. it's really nice. I've always thought they should lease kids out for the holidays for those of us that don't have them, you know? <laughs> so, there you go. so that was kind of fun. So you got uh, your wish. I did. I know, thanks for Rotary. And then uh, Ronald McDonald Walk, um, our, our goal from our, our, community, our, our county hospital is to have a Ronald McDonald family room. And we would be the first in Ventura County to do that. We're the first in the, the, our area. And so we did a walk, our very first walk, and we did very well. And we had over 900 people attend and about um, $100,000 was raised. Then we had a Mexico build where we go down and build homes for people that need homes down in Mexico. And the next picture is of our eye clinic. We teamed up with Lions Club, actually, to provide eyeglasses and eye exams for people who we don't even ask income level, it's just that people feel they need it and they can't afford it, they come to us and we're able to do it. I think we gave uh, 300 sets of glasses out last year. Great. And then I'm, I'm winding down here. Uh, the next uh, photo is of Turning Point uh, Workday, where we went and helped clean up one of the sites for Turning Point. Turning Point uh, helps out uh, case management for the mentally ill and people that have some, um, some issues like that that they may need to some services. Uh, then the next photo is not of a project, but it's a new member induction, and that's a horrible picture, so get to the next one. Um, <laughs> fire, <laughs> my uh, programs manager sent these to me. Okay. So uh, okay. the fireside chat uh, was the last one, okay. and what we do with new members is that we invite them to have what we call a fireside chat, and we get to know each other, and you get to have more in-depth conversations than you would have during an hour meeting. Oh, very nice. So, well, thank okay. you. Thanks for You're sharing welcome. those. Terry, what do you got there? Okay, so... The first, the first photo that I'd like to highlight is a giant Coke bottle. Okay. And I think that you saw that, Wade, when you came to our club. Right. And so our, one of our goals this year was to um, eradic help eradicate polio. And in fact, I have my polio, have pin, polio on. pin on. And, right. and when we had guests that came to our meeting, um, we would give them a, a, this pin as a remembrance and so that they would know about about the rotary uh, um, bottle when it came around. Mm -hmm. So our goal with this bottle was that we were going to collect 7,000 coins that would hopefully equal to $1,000. Mm -hmm. We were able to raise $2,700 wow. for polio Great. based on passing this bottle around <laughs> every single week. Wow. And so That's nice. that was our big Coke bottle. That's great. And so that was a special, a special thing that we did. And it really, you know, we tried to make all of our meetings fun. Right. And that was something like it would be on the side and all of a sudden the big Coke bottle would come <laughs> up. And the other one that I wanted to talk about was um, the um, Operation Footprint. Mm -hmm. Now, Operation Footprint is our, uh, one of our um, signature um, uh, projects that we do over in Honduras and it started in 2002 and so this year we were able to get a matching grant to get more equipment and so Operation Footprint goes to Honduras and helps um, kids who have had club feet or club foot yes. And um, so it helps them w to bring the medical supplies, to bring the doctors, to teach the doctors. And so we were excited about being able to have uh, our international group uh, led by Nick Frankel be able to get that matching grant. And so that's something that I wanted to talk about. And then also there's a picture there about um, the troops. And so what we did during the course of the month of May is that we highlighted the troops. And so every single week we had, we invited invited different, um, different um, uh, organizations who would have the troops that would come in, some retired, some current. And so we actually went to Rotary International and we got this special pin. Mm. This is a special Rotary pin for, vet, for veterans. And it's, nice. so anybody who was a Rotarian, then we were able to give them that. And so we had that pin, so we made that little ceremony for them. We also, at every meeting of that particular month, we collected supplies, and then we had a, an, an evening where we all got together and put all the supplies together in the boxes so that we could send them over. So it was pretty, it was pretty impactful. So we really loved that month of May. And then in April, we had two things in April. One was a ladies' night, and so these were, um, we had 115 ladies who showed up at the new art museum at the Oaks Mall. Mm -hmm. 
And um, what it was about, it was about introducing ladies to Rotary. And so um, I would say that only 20% of the people came were in Rotary, and the rest of them learned about Rotary. Mm -hmm. And so it was a champagne and sweets, and um, it was all donated. Everything was donated to us, so we were able to make $6,000 from that evening and then also to um, make uh, women aware of Rotary. And, and believe it or not, there were women who didn't know that women were in Rotary. <laughs> so, so that was a very educational thing that we did, an awareness. And then at the end of the month, we had a senior prom. So it was called the Spring Fling. And so what that was is that um, it was a senior, whether you were a senior in high school or whether you were a senior from 1950, you got to wear what you wore at that time. So it was kind of a costume thing. And we engaged the Interact children um, of Rotary and they, uh, from Cal Lutheran, and so they were able to make corsages and so they were able to make a thousand dollars from that. So again, we had a lot of awareness about Rotary and uh, had some fun and made some money. Great. So. <laughs> Those are great ones. Sherry, how about you? What do you got? Well, last year our little club completed 33 projects and I have yeah. five really to share with you. Our biggest project is the Rancho El Chorro Outdoor mm -hmm. School. Okay. It is uh, located in San Luis Obispo. Our goal was to re uh, build yurts, new brand new yurts to replace the pre-war cabins and the school serves about 10 over thousand uh, school aged children wow. uh, each year. They come for one, three day to five day programs learning about environmental science. And what's neat is we have been able to work with the San Luis Obispo County Education Office to incorporate Road Through International Guiding Principle, the four-way test, mm. and hopefully that they will learn this ethics and be able to apply to their life. And the project uh, also include rebuilding of the amphitheater. This year, we're concentrating on building an outdoor school. And the, it has 14 clubs participating together with us, including one from Canada and another from Mexico. Wow. Yes. The next project that I would like to share with you is our collaboration with the youth with our Cayucas Interact. If I'm not mistaken, Cayucas uh, Rotary or is, the, has, is the only club that sponsors an Interact in a middle school. Hmm. You might correct me, wait. No, Anyhow, you're, you're we, do, right. we do quarterly beach cleanups and, and street cleanups that, uh, that the Slope, which is the San Luis Obispo County Parks, has uh, rewarded us or recognized us with the, the plot at the Cayucas Pier, at the beginning of Cayucas Pier. And for the past 11 years, the club has hosted a Lost at Sea Memorial mm -hmm to honor veterans as well as remember civilians uh, on Memorial Day. The event is held in the afternoon at 3 o'clock every Memorial Day and I understand it is the only one uh, on the West Coast. Very moving, touching uh, uh, ceremony. It's chaired by a retired chaplain. The veterans come all dressed in their full uniform. There, there's a bagpipe and there's the tolling of the bell the reading of the missing man formation. There's a gigantic reef whereby the, uh, the chaplain will allow us to say a few words of prayer as we march onto the pier and it's tossed into the ocean. And the ceremony ends with two warbirds, airplanes fly, mm. flying over wow. and they're donated by Paso Estero uh, Warbirds Mu Museum. So uh, I got two more pro events of the 33 to share with you. Uh, as you know, we, know, we do our four-way tests and our students, the elementary school students and middle school students do the four-way uh, essay contest and they learn about the four-way test principles. And it's really, really fun to read how they write and how these uh, four-way tests would apply to their life. Interestingly, the students, the middle school students from Cayucas School has won some awards at uh, district level. So last but least, because uh, in two days, it will be July 4th, and we have our July 4th float that we are building as a team building ex oh, exercise, wow. and over 50,000 people come wow. 
to our small town in Cayucas. Wow. <laughs> great public image and yes. membership drive. That would be, yeah, that is great. <laughs> Outstanding. Um, Terry, I'm going to come back to you now. Yeah. Tell us if you can, since you had an outstanding year, there's no doubt about it. All of you have best clubs, there's a reason for that one. What stands out in your mind as something that was really special this year as president? Um, I think what was really special was the participation of the club members. You know, our goal was to have, you know, 80 or 90 percent. We had 100 percent participation wow. in something. Great. And um, so, and, you know, engagement was number one, you know, and membership and, and engagement. But we focused on really getting our members engaged and getting more participation because what had started to happen is, you know, people weren't coming. And so, you know, like uh, making sure that the meetings were strong and fun mm -hmm. and uh, making sure that they knew what was happening next week, next month, um, you know, what was going to be coming up and um, making sure that we had a telephone group that called people, we text people, oh, and nice. so the communication. Right. And so, and the, I guess the other thing for me is that we really focused on social media mm -hmm. and um, also on our website. And so we, we attracted a young, um, a new member from Pepperdine University that really revamped everything for us. Uh, we actually got a new member based on somebody going to our website. Mm -hmm. And then also um, we had a um, person who came forth when we were selling, we, we sold bands for the borderline victims in that borderline shooting from last November and he saw that what we were doing and so he asked for bands and he sold them in his neighborhood and he made twelve hundred dollars then he went to his company now this man is not a Rotarian he just saw it on, the, on our, our site and he went back to his company and they matched the funds wow. and so we, we ended up with twenty five hundred dollars and it all came wow. through the social media site and so, um, you know, that was, again, um, you know, in our club, you know, we had to have some lessons on how to get mm -hmm. into Facebook and how to, you know, use our, our you know, social media. And so uh, I think all in all, at the end, uh, we had a, my last meeting, I decided to have a club assembly because really what I wanted is I wanted the club to see how much we really had gotten done. Mm -hmm. And, I, and yeah. I showed, you know, I showed our, our retreat board and, and all of the th accomplishments that we had made. And then also that we had about 30 guests there, mm -hmm. and I wanted them to see what Rotary was about. Good. Excellent. Thank you. How about you? Well, Terry said it all. Yes. Um, no, <laughs> no, there's a, for me, I guess what really st stood out for me more than anything is the fact that by making sure our time is well spent, that the programs were relevant, uh, and, and the fact that we became a peace building club this mm -hmm. year, which I, is very important to me because mm -hmm. that really struck home about Rotary. Mm -hmm. uh, that, um, and I think there was a speaker when we went to Toronto that really mm -hmm. rang a chord when he said, you know, more than the four way test, nowadays we need to ask the question, is it true? Mm -hmm. And then understand and be willing to understand the truth that other people live under. And once we understand that truth that other people live under, then we might be able to actually have peace. Mm -hmm. And um, that's more important today than ever. But we're, that was kind of a side note because the real thing for me is that by keeping our meetings positive, keeping them relevant, keeping them focused, um, I, got, I was amazed at the number of people who wanted to come to at least hear our programs. We had three program to three dates where we, I think we had over 40 guests. Wow, 40 which was, guests, yeah. which was <laughs> unreal. Impressive. Oh, yeah. So I know <laughs> if the rest of the community wants to hear yeah. something at Rotary, it gives us a great opportunity to also share with them what Rotary is, because it really is, as I, as I said earlier, a fantastic vehicle great. for finding, finding solutions for today's problems. Yeah. Very good. And you, Sherry? Well, we, we Cayucas Rotary experienced some um, challenges about three years ago. So for me, it's really the members. Uh, we, we need to get members engagement and uh, participation, but our club has really come together and bond better this year. So we are truly like a Rotary family. We take care of each other. We, we get together outside of Rotary. We have fun doing projects together. 
and uh, we, we party well. <laughs> yeah. And by the way, for yeah. you, this is your second time as president, right? That's correct. That's correct. It's more fun this second time oh, around. Is it really? Yeah. Okay. The first time was 11 years ago when Cayucas Rotary was just first established. Right, right. You were the charter president. Yes, that's correct. We were chartered on March 25, 2008. Right. Good for you. Well, I'll take your word for it because I'm never doing it again. I'll tell you that. <laughs> it was a lot of work. <laughs> well, there's a common thread here. Can you see it? I yeah. can definitely yeah. see that. Yeah, yeah that's right. Yeah. I'm going to ask you one last question. Okay. Uh, we've got about a minute or so left. What would be one thing that you would want to do that you didn't get to do this year as mm. president? Because I know we're all high achievers, and there's always one thing. Oh, I wish they had time to do that one thing. Yeah. Uh, well, there's a few, but the one main thing for me is I spent, uh, or, or our board spent so much time on the programs that I didn't feel we left enough time to do what we call craft talks, okay. where we learned more oh, about each, each member. Because a lot of us, and I speak for myself, I love people and love hearing their life story and who they are and what makes them tick. Right. And so I would have done that more often than we did. Okay. Yeah. Terry. yeah, it's so funny because that's that was the one. That was was, there were two things. One one was a personal thing, and one was that is that I really wanted to get to know our members better, yeah. and I really wanted to um, improve our club runner and get more information in there so that about our our, our members. And the other thing is that I had these goals that we were going to have all of these systems in place so that when I went on to the next year and then somebody else came in that they would just step right in. And so the systems are not the way I would have liked them to be. But, you know, of course, being the past president and being the advisor, um, I'd like the, the opportunity to help make that happen. Great. Thank you. And you, Sherry, real quick. I have a big goal, <laughs> which I, it's not possible to be achieved in one year, to build the Peace Center on Ron Chow oh, okay. Outdoor School okay. and maybe initiate the global grant yeah. for that. You may be able to start yeah. that one. Yes. Um, with that, we've got a little bit of time left. And one thing Rotary does is give opportunity to everybody. We have with us an exceptional team this time, first time or second time this year. We have fun in the sun. So come on out here, jump on stage. Right. We want to see a team here that's been doing this filming for us. All right. Uh, yeah, you guys jump on up great. here. Great job. Great Thank job, you everybody. Guys. Nice. Great job. All right. Was that fun? You guys have a good time? All right. Anybody fall asleep? You lose anybody? Okay, great. With that, everybody, thank you very much for joining us, and we will see you next time. Take a look at all of the great clubs around District 5240 and the clubs themselves. Visit them. Thanks. See you later.